When I first heard about a last day on earth NFT, I thought that there is nothing that could be worse for that game. But as I've been getting lots of sponsorships for NFT games and I learn more what an NFT does, I realized that there are three reasons why it might not be that bad for last day on earth. The sponsored game on this list is A3 Still Alive, which is a game that I love to promote on this channel. It is a multi-genre game, which is amazing because multiple genres in one game allow the game to stay interesting longer. Some of you might remember that I put this game at number two, just under Genshin Impact in my video on the top 10 MMOs for 2021, which now has over 300,000 views. Since that video was released, this game has come out with a ton of new updates including even more really quality game modes. The latest of these updates is potentially the biggest and it is the reason I am honored to be sponsored to talk about this game in this video. Because this latest update is a brilliantly integrated blockchain update. Now when you hit level 190 in A3 still alive, a new location becomes available in which you can grind for a Neutrium Ore. This ore can be refined into a Neutrium which can be exchanged for external cryptocurrencies through Netmarble's new MBX wallet. So this is essentially the cryptocurrency backed by Netmarble, which is a giant game company with tons of great games. Netmarble launched the DEX feature in April of this year, which allows you to exchange your in-game Enetrium or for real money. The exchange rate between Enetrium and MBX has stabilized for over a week after the launch of DEX system, which proves that the A3 ecosystem is healthy enough compared compared to other pay to earn games. So this is a huge step for Netmarble and it is all starting with A3, which is a game that I already love and have already recommended to you guys on previous videos. Oh, and they're also hosting an ITU airdrop giveaway event that ends on June 3rd, in which they're giving away 100,000 ITUs to people who complete Gleam missions. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, please go check out the descriptions and links that I put in the description and pin comment of this video. As just seen in that commercial, NFTs are everywhere now. A lot of game developers are obsessed with them and gamers are getting more and more jaded by them. Now, some of them are better than others. For example, as I just mentioned in that advertisement for A3 Still Alive, Netmarble has been able to do a good job stabilizing their economy, which is going to be really important as they integrate it through their other games, which they're a big company. So that is another perk of their NFT the ability to use it between different games. But like I said, when I first heard about a last day on earth NFT from one of my subscribers, I was abhorred by the idea. But then as I thought about it more, I thought of three reasons why it might actually help Last Day on Earth. The first reason is that it would make advancing in the game cheaper. There are a lot of hoarders in Last Day on Earth. That's often the main point of the game is to hoard lots of resources. And many of us enjoy that. We like that element of getting tons of guns, chest full of weapons and armor and everything we could need to survive the zombie apocalypse. A new player joining Last Day on Earth, if they wanted to advance and get really advanced in the game, the idea of them paying for that is thousands and thousands of dollars. It gets cheaper each year, but then they add more and more stuff. So for them to be able to buy a base from an older player, whether that was a free to play or a pay to win player, could end up being a steal for those players. And the reason I know that players would want to do this is because in Frostborn, this already goes on in the black market. It's not supposed to be happening, but people will spend money and buy entire bases from other people. And when I I asked them, why are you doing this? They just light up and talk about how it's like Christmas. They get this whole base of all the stuff that other people farm for only $2,000. So this already goes down in the underground of Frostborn. I've never done it. I've never participated in that, but I do know people that have. So if Kafir was able to make a base in Last Day on Earth, an NFT, I know that it would get bought. In fact, the price would go down because it wasn't, you know, nefarious and all of the bad connotations. It'd be sanctioned by the devs and the devs would get a chunk from it because that's how NFTs work. That's why these game developers are so into it. And then the gamers that wanted to buy a base, it'd be a steal for them too. So a win for the devs, a win for the pay to win, but this doesn't really help the free to play players. The second reason this could be good for Last Day on Earth is it gives a greater purpose to grinding. For those of you who have seen my tips and tricks video 
video for Last Day on Earth, you will know of the term, the exponential grinding pyramid of death. Last Day on Earth has a ton of grinding. And once you do that grinding, you then use those resources to grind at a higher level and then use those resources to grind at a higher level. And it goes on and on and on. I remember early on in Last Day on Earth when I was raving against this, one of the devs was like, well, I mean, isn't that the point of gaming? And I'm like, no. Grinding is not the point of gaming unless it's fun. If you can make grinding fun, if you can make it feel that sense of satisfaction, great, but that's not the point of gaming. The point of gaming is to feel that sense of accomplishment or to have fun while we're doing something or to have the novelty of something new. The benefit of making, let's say, a base in Last Day on Earth, an NFT, is now someone who did all of that work to grind for their motorcycle and all that stuff, a free-to-play player can now sell for that cryptocurrency their base. And they may not do it. You guys may be like, no, I love Last Day on Earth. I don't want to stop playing it. I'm going to keep my base. That's great, but you will still feel the sense of my base is worth blank. My base is now worth X number of dollars. It gives you that purpose as you hoard more and more health. You can see that NFT number go up and up and you could be like, yeah, this is how much my base is worth. It's worth a lot. It's valuable. And it's going to give you an even greater sense of accomplishment. So this could be a real perk for free to play players. But the biggest reason why I think an NFT for Last Day on Earth might not be so horrible is because it would allow you to trade bases cross Kefir games. Kefir has a lot of survival games. Some of you have probably seen my theories where I think it's dozens and dozens of games. But even if you don't subscribe to those theories, they definitely have Last Day on Earth, Frostborn, and Grim Soul Survival. These three games are all really high quality. Last Day on Earth is the big one, it's the original one, but these other games are really high quality and they have a different feel to them. Grim Soul has a really solid storyline and unbelievably difficult PvE challenges. Frostborn has multiplayer, which allows you to play with family. Imagine the ability to take your Last Day on Earth base turn it into a Kefir cryptocurrency and then just go buy the equivalent base in Grim Soul or in Frostborn and then just keep doing that when you want to change a flavor. That economy would not only allow players to have more freedom as far as which game to play, but it would allow players that maybe got burnt out on that game to go and try out a different game for a while and kind of experience that but not feel like they're starting over from scratch. Though I will say that one of the biggest weaknesses of this theory is I think starting over from scratch in any of these games is the best way to do it. In fact, if you're getting bored of the game, I would say just start over. Usually people that start over find that they fall in love with the game all over again because that start, that sense of progression is just so magical and it's something that in a lot of the Kefir games kind of gets ruined with all the grinding long term. So ultimately, even though I came out with these three ideas of why it might not be that bad, I still think it is a bad idea. One, because I think starting over is a beautiful thing about Kefir games, but also just the way that Kefir views the game. Last Day on Earth is their original game and their moneymaker, which has made them somewhat opposed to being innovative with it, which is ironic because that is why it took off so well in the beginning. I love Last Day on Earth. I have great memories of it. It was the original game of this channel. I eventually moved on to all kinds of survival games, and now I'm one of the main content creators of top 10 lists for mobile games, which has been a much better fit for me. It allows me to do a ton of research on each video and then the videos just grow forever. If you want to check out some of my newer content, this playlist has my 15 best and most current videos. Alright guys, I'll see you next time.